you can see the need right now. So mm-hmm. those who adopt, who, those who pivot their startup, will have an ano, will have a good chance of getting in- investors. Mm-hmm. And I think because and dahil pera ngayon eh, kailangan lang nilang good idea. I think each and every person right now will experience their desert experience. But the beauty of it, we are hopeful because God has promised us a promised land. Mm-hmm. And ako, I would have that kind of a mindset. When you lose everything, be hopeful because God has great things in store for you. Mm-hmm. And itong desert experience is just a phase in our life. Mm-hmm. So maybe most of us would, would have, will, will you know, undergo their desert experience. But you know, yun ang kagandahan. At the end of the tunnel, God has promised us greater things. There will be a new normal pagdating ng after the lockdown. There will, it's not going to be business as usual, definitely. And this new norm is people are afraid to go out. People are fearful of their lives. So there will be a lot more demand on online, on digital. How could you offer advertising sa EDSA pag wala namang sasakyan na dumada? So if all of the advertisement money will go through digital. Mm. So talagang iba yung impact nito. So especially if your your business is not yet in e-commerce, you need to right now prepare, learn, study on how to do e-commerce para pagdating ng after the lockdown, you'll be able to create a new channel because it's going to impact your business talaga. <music> video we have Steve C. He's the CEO and founder of Great Deals E-Commerce Corporation. He's now the face of e-commerce in the Philippines. Now, ito interesting because of the lockdown. A lot of the businesses that have been into e-commerce are double downing into it more. And a lot of businesses na dati wala silang pakialam sa e-commerce, they're now, they're now forced to go into e-commerce as well because there's no choice. Everyone's forced to go into digital. So welcome to the vlog, Steve C. Thank you so much for joining us. Now your brothers have been here the past few shows. Now it's your turn right now. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Paul, for the invitation. It's a pleasure and an honor. First things first. Now a lot of people have been uh, interviewing you because of your contributions in the e-commerce space, and I've seen also a lot of videos of, of you raising money, raising capital for your e-commerce venture. But I want to start. Uh, on your journey, paano nagsimula, paano ka napunta dito, and uh, the reason why I'm asking that is for people who may want to come into this uh, venture also, uh, that they might, might see some principles and snippets of how you actually started also. I started with, during the infancy stage of e-commerce, which is 2012, mm. uh, I, I, maybe you have remember, do you still remember yung mga and so go, cash cash pinoy, group one days, mga deal sites. So we were supplying to them. So I was a wholesaler supplying to those deal sites. Dun ako and then Lazada came, they opened up the marketplace. Pero yung pinaka easy po palang nun time na yun was just to sell yung mga slow moving item ko sa Lazada during that time. No? So that was 2014. November 11, 2014 came. And I think uh, during that time, I have around 2,000 pieces of power banks for Christmas mm. to be sold. And in just one day, during that 11-11, nasimot yung power banks. Oh. As in, gone. No? So that was, I think, my uh, light bulb moment that I would like to learn about e-commerce. So I started learning uh, and get, you know, getting more focused in the industry of e-commerce during that time. Before you were doing sa Cash Cash, you, know, you had a brick and mortar or talagang uh, you... Yes. I do have brick and mortar. So, may mga stores ako sa Glorieta, Greenbelt, uh, sa mga provinces, no? So, nag-wholesale kami sa Visayas, Mindanao, ng mga cellphone accessories. So, yun yung, yun yung business ko during that time, 2011 to 2012. Okay. So, oh, fast forward 1111, uh, if, if the power box did well, then how did it? So, doon na, I start concentrating on selling online, but during those times, hirap pa magbayad, magbayad yung Lazada, you know, mga birthday sa mga startup. Alibaba bought Lazada around 2015, 2016. I decided to, ano talaga, uh, close all of my offline shops and concentrate online. So yung first na first brand ko na alala ko pa was Giga. 
around uh, January 2015, I offered na nakasama ko lang yun sa bazaar. No? And sabi ko, lakas-lakas magbenta nito sa bazaar. Ha? Dahil bumibili. So, dinilipitan ko yung owner and I asked him, uh, can I be your franchisee? Pero I will not open a uh, an actual brick and mortar store but I'm gonna open an online shop. So, I could be your e-franchisee. Yun yung word pa nga ginamit ko. E-franchisee nung time na yun. And then, uh, as the years goes by, we were able to close. Uh, like My first multinational company was Reckitt Banky Sir, the owner of the brands Jurex. Uh, we were able to grow their business 500%. Nung 2016 pa lang yun, ah. In just five months' time, we were able to grow their online business 500%. And they became the number one home care brand sa Lazada. And you spread out, so we got a lot of referrals from different brands. And then up to now, uh, as of today, we handle around almost 300 plus brands, that like the likes of Nestle, Unilever, PNG, L'Oreal, Maybelline, Abbott. So those are some of the brands that we're carrying right now. For people watching this, know that they're not familiar with what you do. When you say they're your they're your clients and they put it in Lazada, what do you do exactly for them? We're an e-commerce solution provider. To make it simpler. Brands or retailers uh, outsource their e-commerce channels to us. So we take care of everything end-to-end. -end. When we say end-to-end, -end, from taking a you know, uh, photo, from digital content until last mile de delivery, we take care of them. No? So parang talagang online distributor rin kami. We're heavy on digital content plus supply chain distribution ng mga goods and brands. So, what we offer is we take care of their marketplace platforms like Lazada, Shopee, Zalora, Zilingo, Grab, and we also take care of their web stores, yung mga .com nila. Basically, they're outsourcing all of the online services already to you instead of having a brick and mortar store. But for small players that meron akong cupcake na gusto ibenta, uh, do you suggest they go through you or they just do it themselves? And then these are mainly for big big corporations already. Okay, each company has its own uh, parang strategy. So our strategy talaga is to take care of uh, of our you know the brands and retailers that are number one in each category. Kumbaga. But we have some uh, affiliates, uh, subsidiaries like Rapify.ph, Stratquad that helps out with the SME. Meron kami isang uh, startup company na Zagana.com which offer a uh, farm to kitchen platform siya. so it's fresh vegetable and fruits but that's mm. retail or wholesale orders yan. <clears throat> you can download the app and order your isang kilong banana isang kilong carrots ganyan Ngayon, with your expertise online there are a lot of people here who are watching that um, baka yung business nila they're disrupted already based on the lockdown or there will be people that will need to pivot their sources of income ano pwede nilang gawin with what they have right now na pwede nilang uh, pasukan also or at least point them towards the right direction on anong kailangan nilang aralin in terms of how they can also pivot. Do you suggest na maglasada kagad sila? Maghanap na lang sila ng item ng benta nila sa lasada and then start with that or are there other avenues na pwede nilang pagkakitaan e-commerce wise? Yun inflection point ng e-commerce sa Pilipinas nangyari dahil dito sa lockdown. People that doesn't know how to shop online are downloading apps, are downloading mobile payments, everything that they need to do to be able to be digital. In terms of inflection point, I think ito na yun, no? There will be a new normal pagdating ng after the lockdown. There will, it's not going to be business as usual, definitely. And this new norm is people are afraid to go out. People are fearful of their lives. So there will be a lot more demand on online, on digital. How could you offer advertising sa EDSA pag wala namang sasakyan na dumada? Mm. So if all of the advertisement money will go through this digital. Mm. So talagang iba yung impact nito. So especially if your your business is not yet in e-commerce, you need to right now prepare, learn, study on how to do e-commerce para pagdating ng after the lockdown, you'll be able to create a new channel because it's gonna impact your business talaga. For entrepreneurs that would like to easily start yung kanilang e-commerce journey. Uh, going to Lazada and Shopee, they have Lazada University, they have Shopee University. You can look it at YouTube. Available yan on how to do online, shop, uh, how to sell in Lazada and Shopee. That's the simplest step that you can do. What would be the first step naman for people who don't have anything na mabibenta dito? How do they find 
items that they could actually sell also. It's gonna be a challenge. But of course, definitely, there will be a change of consumer behavior. Like now, you rather buy food than watches. Diba? Or you rather buy cleaning materials. Or because of the COVID virus, there will be a lot of people working from home. They need to have good internet access to be able to work. So yung mga gadgets na that will help enhance your Wi-Fi or your internet would be yun yung mga things that can be ano, uh, look upon. No? And for people that are working or, or malalay off, I think the logistic industry will need to hire a lot of drivers. Mm. Uh, and I think that's, you know, you can easily pivot. Kunyari, dati, uh, masayista ka, hindi mag-driver ka na lang or something. Mm. Uh, because of the new, ano, because I think there's there's definitely going to be a lot of demand in the logistic industry because e-commerce is, logistic is part of the e-commerce. Eh. So, e-commerce will not drive pag walang logistic magdi-deliver. There is a lot of opportunity in this, in this, ano, I end call, no? Sabi ko nga sa mga kumpanya, dapat we're, we play the offensive, we don't play the defensive when it comes to this kind of crisis. Our team, we created a war room. Group chat lang, war room. Na for our, for our you know, uh, management team, na talaga looking at daily on how we can uh, defend our revenue stream and increase and give new channels. So even during this lockdown, we were able to open Grab Mart. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, we're opening to different cities pa ng Grab Mart. What is Grab Mart? Yung sa Grab Mo. Di ba ngayon, ang, ang pila ngayon sa groceries is 5 hours para mat- makapasok. Di ba? Yun yung mga ano nila, impact nila. Eh, no? So Grab Mart, you can, if you're in Quezon City, parts of Quezon City, Valenzuela, you'll be able to order groceries and deliver to you in 30 minutes. And I think e-commerce will do a lot more things especially after the lockdown, everyone's ready to go. Mm. And even companies that doesn't realize, ngayon na-realize sila na dapat may e-commerce ako pag may nangyaring katulad na ganito. You're up when everyone, when majority is down right now, you're doing, uh, this will be a good year for, this will be a good year for you. <laughs> so I cannot say it's an up year for us, but because it's a very challenging three weeks already for us. Mm. No, in our business. Kasi skeletal workforce, hirap ng ano, uh, we did a lot of uh, safety guidelines for our frontliners. If it were you, and then you lose everything from all of this, and you have to start from scratch, what what will you do? Personally, sa akin, if I would to lose everything, which I did, I did, I became negative even before it. Oh. You know, sa mga negative, you know? And I think uh, when people look at me, oh, si Steve, you know, everybody, all of us, we have our desert experience. We always go through desert experience. Yung journey sa buhay natin, not everything is always the promised land or the paradise. No. And if people here that are listening, you're, you're, experience, you're, you're experiencing your desert experience, the famine, I think each and every person right now will experience their desert experience. But the beauty of it, we are hopeful because God has promised us a promised land. And ako, I would have that kind of a mindset. When you lose everything, be hopeful. Because God has great things in store for you. Mm. And itong desert experience is just a phase in our life. Mm. So maybe most of us would would have will will you know undergo their desert experience. But you know, yun ang kagandahan. At the end of the tunnel, God has promised us greater things. Mm. So don't so you said nag negative ka. What year was that? And what what caused that to happen? I was in my early 20, uh, 26, no? I, I think uh, I was down by uh, 32 million pesos. Oh. For a period, yeah, no? Kaya don't lose hope. Kaya ako nung time na yun, sabi ko, wow, paano ko to babawiin? Paano ko to ba mababawi and everything? But you know, God has been faithful. Just remain faithful to it. How long did it take from negative 32 million to balik to zero or at least to... Uh, uh, from negative 32 million to balik to zero, 12 years. Wow! So, prayer ko nung time yun, sabi ko, Lord, wag naman katulad ni Moses na 40 years. Kahit kay Joseph lang, 12 years, pwede na. Okay. Wow. wow. Diba si Joseph din? From a favored son, he became a slave jailed before he became the prime minister. So talaga, every people will go through. Yun yung ano natin. Pero ang kagandahan yan, you have a lot of examples from the Bible that 
God has been faithful to their lives. Just remain faithful. With, when that was when that was happening, sobrang nalungkot ka ba or talagang yung yung mindset mo na optimistic ka na hopeful ka? Well, was, there are na, there are days talaga na you know you feel down. Eh, isipin mo kung ano taong taong ka na nagbabayad ng utang mo hindi pa tapos. Hindi hmm. mang taong ka na nagbabayad ng utang mo lahat ang kinikita mo pang basic needs ng pamilya mo and then lahat pinang babayad mo ng utang mo. Diba? So nung time na yon, syempre, iba rin yung mapapagod ka rin. That's why you need good uh, support team, support group, mentors, disciples to help you out during these times. And yun, I think yun yung isa sa mga uh, I could say life messages that God has impart on me to be able to share my life story also to other people that are struggling. When you said that uh, you, you you got into debt, no, would you still encourage entrepreneurs right now? Uh, to go into debt also or they should just be more conservative sa negosyo nila na uh, they just bootstrap it they only grow organically based on the sa kinikita nila or kung tingin nila calculated sige utang tayo calculated naman to pero may risk pa like ganito may, either I've received so many messages that last the past three years sobrang ganda nag-open pa sila ng apat na store not thinking this will happen so when this happened yung apat na store na yun naka-loan uh, yun, sarado and it's it's dra- it's draining them also uh, what, what do you what can you advise people? well there are, there's what we call good and bad debt naman eh. so kaya nga kailangan magplano rin yan kaya habang nasa ano planuhin na so we need to be ako I, I, I did a lot the first thing that I did when the lockdown was hit was to zero out our marketing spend kasi wala rin mayayari why spend when there's no movement so you need to cut costs immediately so that you'll be able to survive i think in terms of debt debt is good in terms of growing your business because without debt hindi ka naman lalago diba pero we do not get into debt na ang laki-laki ng mga interest madami nagtatanong on on raising money no for those who want to do that ano yung, ano yung mga tips mo on how they can get investors also for uh, whatever company they want to to start lalo na yung mga madaming ang daming lumalapit na may app sila that they have this idea that they will be the next uh like they will be the uber for for selling this etc uh how 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 did they go about it well uh personally if i were you i will not sell portion of my company right now because we're on a very unstable times in terms of the investment community right now cash is still king right now it's gonna be an uphill climb for people that are raising money it's not because it's not a normal economy already we're in a recession right now so there so i i believe if you're limited with your capital best is you know bootstrap it continue to grow it kite little by little when the right time comes when the economy is booming then you can easily share at a better price for your ano, uh, in terms of investment that is needed unless you have the cure for covid then you can raise <laughs> hell money i think uh i think in terms of ano, uh, let me rephrase it if your app is health related there's a lot of opportunities i think you have to look at not as a buhol and ako hindi what does your app does to help in this new normal and if it's gonna be a good answer i think there's great opportunity you can see the need right now so those who adopt who, those who pivot their startup will have an i know will have a good chance of getting in the investors and i think because and dahil pera ngayon eh kailangan lang nilang good idea what what's your suggestion uh if they kunyari idea pa lang uh Siyempre, some of them may want funding kagad, pero the problem, the problem is with that, you will have to sell a lot and at a very, very cheap price. Or would you suggest that pag may na, gumagana na talaga or pag may users na talaga, that's when they, that's when they sell? When, what, in, your, in your opinion, when's the best time to actually start getting investors na? Sa akin, ano, if you can bootstrap, like ako personally, I've seen a lot of startup founders. Uh, personally, who sold their company too early, mm. so they they don't really you know they exit sila pero parang hindi sila nag exit. Mm. Ibig sabihin, di ba hindi nagbago yung buhay nila dahil na ako hindi eh kung ano lang because it was sold too early. Mm. Uh, alam mo naman minsan mga Pilipino di ba 
mahilig magano mag ang ang, ang ang problema sa ating mga Pilipino is ano eh, we don't have a bamboo tree mentality you know when you put when you plant a mango you harvest a mango which is the next day if you plant a sambagita it will takes weeks and then you you see the sambagita flower but if you plant a bamboo tree it will take seven years mm. but then after what it will shoot high up because your foundations known and roots known must be and then you get better uh, value for your company no eh, i think yun yung ginawa namin with great years uh, raising capital is like getting married eh. you need to know the right partner you need to know na you're in the better position to negotiate kasi kung wala kang pera makipag ano ka ano ine-negotiate mo patay ka di ba eh alam niya ng mga ano eh mga angel investor I, i've experienced it i've, I've raised some raised money uh, and talk to a lot of VCs and PEs so talagang iba ibang mundo na niyan and if you're a typical entrepreneur at wala kang backup plan na kailangan mo sila kakainin kanila talaga any final words for uh, entrepreneurs right now that want to take advantage of this opportunity that ano uh, niniwala ko may opportunity pa rin eh, kahit uh, may may crisis na katakot uh, there there's a lot eh, but people's i think people's mindset is not uh, on the opportunity it's on the fear it's on the panic and yun any anything that will help encourage them kasi feeling ko after this madaming gusto maging katulad mo na sobrang yaman na sobrang galing also so okay naman no? <laughs> Paul, uh, let me sh- uh, finish with a story. Uh, there was a teacher, no, sa class niya, she brought in a glass of water, put it on the table, and then she shook the table so hard that the water spilled out of the glass. And then sabi ng teacher, ay, natapon yung orange juice. So yung mga sudyante, ma'am, 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 tubig po yan, hindi yan orange juice. Sabi ng teacher, alam mo ganyan din sa buhay. We are the glass. And we are being now shook. There are storybelled sa mga nangyayari sa atin dahil sa lockdown. And ano yung man lumabas doon sa ano? Kung tubig yan, tubig ang lalabas. At hindi orange juice. It's something inside you is full of complaint, grumbling. Uh, you're not thankful. Yun ang lalabas. But if you have hope, you have... Uh, resilience, you have the innovation to change to the new norm, yun ang ilalabas ng turbulence. So I hope in the, we learn this in this time of, uh, especially this this Holy Week. No, It's a time of reflection on our relationship with our Almighty. No? And it will be a great help for us to really be in the relationship the one who truly provides for us. If people want to get in touch with you or do business with you after watching this video, how can they get in touch with you as well? You can follow me on LinkedIn, no? uh, Steve C. Also, sa Facebook, pwede rin. At saka, we have a website, www.greatdealsport.com for if you want to uh, take a look at our service. Galing. May, may sinabi ko last question na yun kanina pero naisip, may naisip lang din ako habang nagsasalita ka. Ano yung pinaka, pinaka number one secret mo para maging mayaman isang tao? Anong pinaka advice mo? One one advice. Uh, Joshua 1.9 Do not let the book, the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night and you will be prosperous and successful. Eh nandun eh. Tinanong mo kung ano yung success eh. Di, I think uh, meditating, meditating on God's word will bring us success. Eh si Si God, si Lord na nagsabi niya. All of you watching, I hope that you guys got a lot from this. If you have questions, put them on the comment section below and then we'll, we'll try to see how much vid- how much videos we can make of that as well. And then, yun lang, I hope that you guys got a lot from this. And if you notice it, we've been featuring different entrepreneurs and their, not just their stories, but their techniques that you can get from them no? habang lockdown. Hopefully, hindi lang puro Netflix or TikTok yung nagagawa nyo that you're using this time also to build your skill. And what... What a nice way to learn from Mr. E-commerce, the king of e-commerce. Just eh, search e-commerce, Steve C. Lalabas. And I hope this video helps you guys. Stay well, stay strong, stay smart. See you all again soon. And God bless you all.